Hi guys, today I'm going to be doing another tips and tricks videos in Windows 8 and 8.1. Let's take a look. Hi guys, so today I want to do a some tips and tricks on internet security. Uh, here I have Windows 8.1 and uh, it's pretty much the same in other versions of Windows, so uh, let's get into it. Um, so as we know with internet security, um, there's different techniques and practices to use. Uh, but some of the stuff I want to cover is, for example, uh, clearing your, uh, keeping your internet history clean and clear, passwords, uh, and Adobe Flash settings and updates and stuff like that. Okay, so first I'm going to, so I'll just jump right into my control panel here. Um, first and foremost, probably one of the biggest things you can do is keeping Windows up to date. Always keep, and Windows will bug you about it, and you, although you can turn it off, but always keep automatic updates on. So if your computer's left on a lot and it's connected to web, it'll automatically do it for you, which is great. Um, but if not, you can also go into Windows Update and do it manually by checking for updates. And I'm kind of, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of obsessed. I don't know if you want to call it obsessed, but I always love to check for updates every day, sometimes multiple times a day, because uh, you never know when one might be released if something like a critical update is released or a patch or something, a security update, etc. Although you, when Microsoft is usually now doing their updates about once a month, I believe it's on a Tuesday. Um, but you know, it, it doesn't hurt to check every day at least. Uh, and also, if you have this set up for uh, other products for Microsoft, uh, that, I mean, other products that Microsoft Update can search for. Uh, which I highly recommend you do enable. That's also a good feature as well, because then it'll like if you have Office installed, it'll keep that up to date, uh, or any other little, um, you know, any other type of software that Windows uses. Um, you can also pull down the updates and install them via Windows Update. So that's a given. You know, always keep your operating system up to date on any type of device and any type of operating system if you really want to have the best stability, security, and performance. Uh, in this case, security. Um, another thing. <clears throat> is internet history um you know if we're a lot of us already you know probably familiar with this you know if you're on a, a public computer especially or if you're on a computer that other users use or if you just want to keep your privacy uh, if you want to just keep your activity private um you know we all know about deleting our our browsing history but also though you there's other reasons to delete it too like for example in case any tracking cookies which are all the time implemented uh, uh into our uh on our operating system, you know, download it onto our, into our hard drive, our tracking cookies. Uh, and what that is, is a cookie that is designed to track you across the web. In other words, of, of what websites you visit, view, or you're shopping for, etc. Like if you ever notice, for example, you searched for, uh, say you searched for, you know, laptops in Google, and then you were on some other site and all of a sudden you get an ad popping up about laptop offers. More than likely, it's using that tracking cookie to see what you searched for before to therefore show you ads. Now, to some of us, it's not a big deal. You know, it's like whatever, you know, uh, you, don't, you don't have to pay attention to it. But on the other hand, um, it can be if, you, if you're really, if you're really concerned about your, pri your privacy and security uh, and you just don't like those ads popping up here and there, or if it, especially if the ads become very uh, malicious almost like adware uh, if you have like a lot of pop-ups and stuff here and there from maybe malicious websites then you always want to keep that uh, cleared out as well and on average you will probably receive at least usually several but you'll receive at least a couple or a few uh, or at least one tracking cookie while you're browsing uh, anytime you're browsing the internet it's amazing uh, how often they get implemented anyways so that's another thing uh, you want to use to clean um, Another reason why you want to clear your browsing history, and of course we all know how to do that. But just in case you don't, you go to Control Panel, and you would simply open up the Internet. Oh, I just had it. Internet Options, and uh, from and then it's funny they call it Internet Options there, but here it's called Internet Properties. Anyways, uh, and then you go to Browsing History, and uh, of course click Delete. And oh yeah, I'm sorry. And another thing too is your saved passwords. I highly recommend not saving your passwords. You should never do that. Um, but, and so this is good that it will help delete any saved passwords that you have as well. And of course, like it's talking about cookies, website data, blah, 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 all this other stuff that you uh, don't want maybe or, or don't need uh, for various reasons. So you would make sure all these are checked here. And of course, leave this one unchecked because you don't want to preserve it, the website data. And then of course, click delete. It's going to delete it for you. And when it's done, you're good to go. I also recommend clearing your SSL state just in case and um, and yeah now keep in mind though the cons if you want to call a consequence the only consequence if you do 
are uh, if you are deleting your browsing history a lot is that if you are accustomed to automatically signing in you know or having like let's say gmail or some other website um, set to automatically sign you in it will delete that cookie and you will have to re-sign in um, each time you visit their websites but in today's modern day modern day age and world i recommend you still get in just a normal habit of any time before you want to log in any type, any type of account from email to banking especially you know to whatever always come through here and delete your internet history your browsing history uh just in case you never know maybe something was downloaded maliciously from some website that you didn't mean to go to or whatever yeah uh, it's always good practice to get into uh and then of course there's other little settings here that you can set up like uh, making sure all the ssl versions and tls versions are enabled etc okay um, another thing unfortunately um which has become well another thing is flash adobe flash no offense to adobe they make great stuff but flash is starting to become outdated well i mean there's a lot of different you know things we could talk about flash but all in all one big thing that that they really are uh that's always been a plaguing flash and unfortunately making their image look bad at adobe is uh is uh the security of flash there's always a lot of secu uh, security holes and uh, vulnerabilities and stuff and that's why Flash is always updating their software. Uh, Adobe is always updating their Flash software, and some um, and some companies have tried to push not to use Flash altogether, with newer standards like HTML5, which I uh, I actually agree on, and I I would rather use and you know and you know keep everything moving forward, start using HTML5 because it is better, more secure, etc. And do a whole lot more than Flash because believe it or not, Flash is a very old uh, technology. But anyways, uh, no offense to Adobe, not knocking on them. Um, they came a long way with Flash, and they keep it up to date usually, and that's good. All in all, you just want to make sure you always are up to date with Flash whenever they release a new uh, update, because it's always usually for security problems that that were needing to be patched, etc. Other things you can do in Flash uh, is, as uh, as we all see now with uh, any recent version of Flash, is they have the uh, new Flash Player Settings Manager here in the control panel. Uh, and here, I also recommend going through and deleting all your um, not only your site data and settings, but even if you want the video and license files, like, uh, and then clicking on delete data. And I highly recommend doing this kind of in connection, in junction with when you delete your internet browsing history, uh, because some stuff may be stored here as well, uh, potentially even malicious stuff. You never know, uh, if you accidentally visit a, a malicious website or whatever, and you want to get that off your computer. Um, other things too I like to do is, is these, these settings here under storage, block all sites from storing information on the computer. And of course, this is a given block all sites from using the camera microphone and using peer assistant networking. And I am, of course, you know, a big YouTube avid user. And, you know, some might wonder, well, if, if you block all that, then it might not, Flash might not run properly. But honestly, I've never had any problems. Everything still runs accordingly, just perfectly as it was before. And, uh, and also by keeping these in, enabled here, by blocking these sites from doing this, from storing or using your camera, etc., you're that much more secure because you never want some malicious site to actually use your camera or mic and spy and listen on, listen in on you or store information that you don't want on your computer etc so keep in the habit of using those features in flash player settings um also uh let's see also well of course you know you have options like lo location you can disable and things like that you know you know if you don't want uh websites or apps knowing your location of course um, as i already discussed in a previous video but um also now is when you're browsing the web secure um uh, encryption encryption is very very important nowadays and even then uh the current uh well the the uh i guess you could say maybe still current encryption standards or even, or even previous encryption standards are kind of becoming now uh not as safe as they used to be but still being encrypted in general using uh ssl highly recommend it for everything especially of course which everything usually is enabled by default when you log into any type of account although believe it or not some sites some companies used to use believe it or not no encryption even when you log into an account which uh was just really really scary but now the majority of stuff nowadays everything is uh is uh, using ssl but if it is not let's say for example you went to uh whatever you know you were at a site and it looks something like this http oops www.whatever.com. This is a made up site. And let's say you went there and it was not encrypted. Uh, one way you can tell is, of course, if there's no S here, if it's not using HTTPS, which is secure socket layer or SSL. Also, if there's no lock icon 
um, you know, maybe it's if it's here in the title and address bar or in the tab, then you know, or it might even be over here. I forget, but uh, then you're not encrypted as well. So um, a lot of times, though, some sites still have SSL enabled. their port 443, and one way to enable secure, uh, encryption is simply a uh, quick way I like to do, even if I'm just browsing some new site, is to go back up, to, click back up in the title bar and add an S. Uh, and then hit enter. And then if they are using SSL, it'll reload the website using uh, encryption. And that way, uh, not only are you, uh, of course, they encrypted when you log into your accounts, as most of it is enabled by default now, but even your browsing can be encrypted, and therefore it's much more safer, and you remain uh, much more private. So that's always good. And uh, another thing I want to talk about, and it can be talked about more in security techniques, but is passwords. Uh, passwords is always a thing that's, you know, have maybe has always been can be either problematic or great all throughout history uh, there's different various ways of now of implementing password implementing passwords from biometrics to you know pictures to gestures to just a regular old uh typing it in you know uh, numbers letters and etc um but even if you use this traditional method of typing in your password always keep good password habits and that is to make your password long to make it alphanumeric have some numbers, some letters, capitalized, lowercase, even uh, if it accepts it, even some, you know, other things like uh, punctuation marks, periods, exclamation points, commas, whatever, you know, stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, you want to have it somewhat a little bit lengthy. Um, sometimes it requires at least to have like eight characters long, um, but I do recommend at least the eight character format or longer. And that way you just stay more secure with your password. Now, uh, also, if you really, um, even to be more secure, uh, and some websites automatically require you to do this is every so often you need to change your password and that's always a good technique as well um, you can like and you can technically you can theoretically change it however often you, how, how often you want if you don't even want to change it to every the man, by the mandatory period that the website you're using may require but uh, but by changing it periodically you're always keeping that password changed and therefore it's that's much more secure in case someone was able to uh, crack your password and you were able to change it and by keeping it changed it's that's much harder to crack some i would say some uh some places even change their passwords daily so it all depends on what type how much security and uh, you really want but you should stay at least somewhat secure because you never know with uh, one account might be tied into another account and you don't want anything being compromised as so much stuff is nowadays in the uh, in the world okay so uh, let me guys let me know what you guys think. Uh, um, do you have any other security techniques or practices that you like to do or use? If so, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Or if you have any questions, let me know. I'd love to help you out, all right? All right, everybody. This has been another one of my tips and tricks videos. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. And leave a comment down below and let me know what you think and what you'd maybe like to see next time. Also, if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe. It's the best way to stay up to date and informed with all the latest how-tos, tutorials, tips and tricks, and other awesome content that will be posted in the future. And please go ahead and share with all your friends and family. You never know who else may be in need of some tech help too. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next time.